Welcome to Change Nation, a program brought to you by First30days.com. On this edition of Change Nation, Ariane talks with Jenny McCarthy. Here's Ariane. Jenny McCarthy doesn't like to start an argument, but she's certainly a fighter. She's quickly become a powerful voice in the battle against autism. After the success of her 2007 book, Louder Than Words, about her own journey to treat her son's autism, she's now a shining light for other mothers who have fought against the medical establishment to find treatments for their children. Her new book is Mother Warriors. It not only shares the stories of these powerful parents, but also shares tips and strategies that they've learned to help others get the right help. Today on Change Nation, Jenny joins me to talk about her new book and to share her mother warrior wisdom. Good morning, is this Jenny? It is. Beautiful. Jenny, we're going to launch right into it because I know your time is short. Sure. I guess my first question is, for a parent who's dealing with an autism diagnosis, what's the main message that you want to communicate to them? There's hope. There's hope. So the, the day I got the autism diagnosis, um, my doctor told me there's not much you can do. And if I would have listened to that, uh, the path that Evan would have been on would have been much different. I decided to go home. Um, and listen to my instincts to keep looking, and I Googled the word autism, and this organization called Generation Rescue, what a great name, .org uh, was on there, and it was a parent-run organization of parents helping parents heal their children from autism. And they weren't talking about crazy stuff. They were talking about diet and vitamins. And I thought, what, what a great thing to at least try. It's not like, you know, you're asking them, to do some crazy stuff, it's diet and vitamins. To me, that seemed almost poetically perfect. So um, that's when I decided to just, in blind faith, give it a try. And within two weeks, Evan's language doubled. So I knew I was on the right path. Jenny, do all parents experience guilt uh, yes. that they created this in their child? And what can we replace that with? Um, I don't want to say all parents because I can't speak for all of them, but the majority that I've talk to, and that was, that's been about 60,000 moms face-to-face in the past 10 months, um, the majority of us feel the guilt, and women, moms do. We feel guilty if, you know, our kid gets mad at us, or if we ground them, or you name it. And um, as Eckhart Tolle, who I'm a big fan of, taught me personally that guilt is really part of ego, and it's kind of crazy talk, and you have to really try to let that go and know that that's not real, that all of us moms are doing the best that we can do. Jenny, and for, for people who just want to be told what to do, they're in that first 30 days of a diagnosis, what are three things that they should try? Three things they should try, diet and vitamins and supplements. Those things alone will make your child feel safe so much better. You know, you can find a lot of information in my book, in Mother Warriors, in the back. I put every doctor who is treating kids with autism by state in the back. So I made it easier for parents. There's also Rescue Angels on GenerationRescue.org where moms are standing by, and these are moms that help heal their own children who are now waiting to help other moms. So I have the, you know, the people out there and the information. All you need to do is, you know, listen to your instincts and move forward. So let's talk nutrition specifically. One, two, three things that people should either add or, or avoid with a child with autism. Um, they should avoid wheat and dairy. This is what we're finding out in our community, that these act as an opiate when a child can't break them down, so it's making them stoned, glazy-eyed. Um, once we remove those things, we're finding the kids are getting better. Their eye contact is back. They're able to absorb the typical therapies. Um, so that's what I would avoid. What I would put into their system are um, a multivitamin, um, probiotic, which is good bacteria. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like going back to the way we were always intended to take care of health, which is food and vitamins and minerals and supplement. You know, in, in supplements. So. Sure. It's the most path the most natural way. Yeah. One of the things I loved loved about your book was all these stories of of mother warriors. What what are the traits of a mother warrior? What are what are the things you'd love to just remind women that they have inside of them to cope? 
Well, you know, I believe all mothers, once we become a mother, um, this warrior um, kind of becomes alive in them. Some warriors are much stronger and louder than others, but we all have the opportunity to be in our power um, as much as Source is allowing us to. And, you know, the mother warriors I describe in this book and of this generation are the ones that are not afraid to stand up to authority, that are not afraid to break down walls and change an old paradigm. They're mother warriors that are not afraid to have people... Um, tell them they're crazy and that they can carry on with strength and determination that they can get their child better. Um, and those are the ones I walk beside. And they're just beautiful examples all through the book. What do you feel is the role of, of men and fathers? I know one of amazing statistic was that 80% of marriages end in divorce with a child that is diagnosed with autism. What, what's the message for dads? That we're we're so needing your help. You can't, autism is so hard to go through alone that I need dads to take a hand in their child's recovery. I think a lot of guys in the past didn't know that there was hope available. And I think by empowering the dads to look up and find treatments, um, it will give them something to do besides kind of wallow in depression. Because a lot of guys um, deal with their pain by kind of removing themselves from the home staying you know, busy at work a lot, going on a lot more trips because it's really hard to deal with in the home. And this isn't all dads, but this is a majority of them. So I think empower your husband, empower the dads to um, take a hand in the recovery process, research. Jenny, what do you feel that these beautiful children are here to teach us? Is, oh. there, is there a message? Is there something that we could all benefit from knowing? Yeah. You know, these children are teaching us to, that we need to seriously consider changing this environment. They can't survive in it. We need to clean up the air, clean up our foods, um, clean up medicine. Medicine has become a Band-Aid um, to teach us about, to look into preventative medicine instead of just waiting to get the cancers or waiting to get the diagnosis. Let's prevent it with supplements and changing our lifestyle. And without a doubt, they are giving us that warning, and it's up to, you know, the older generation, us, to pay attention to those warnings and go, huh, maybe it's not just them that need to pay attention. We need to do the same to our own bodies. Jenny, and I also love your message of they're here to teach us how to love and how to look at relationships differently. Jenny, the way we end off all our interviews here on the show is to ask the same people, the same experts and change agents like yourself. Just three very quick questions about change. The first is, what is the belief that you go to during times of change and transition in your own life? What is my belief system in that? Yes, your number one core belief that when you're faced with a change really gets you through. <sighs> believe that anything is possible. I go immediately into I believe, I believe that I can accomplish anything in life. And can I go into the second one? Yes. I believe that everything that happens is for my best benefit. And when you believe that, nothing is a, you know, traumatic experience in your life. And, it, and you look at it and you go, oh, this was a great lesson. Oh, this brought this to me. Or, oh, this, this, this is showing me a different path. It's taking me further on my journey. So everything that happens to me is the best thing that has ever happened to me. You're going to love the next one. Fill in the sentence, the best thing about change is? The best thing about change, it brings you closer to God. Beautiful. And the last one is, what is the best change that you've ever made? The best change that I've ever made has been the health of myself. Um, it's When I changed my own health, I realized I was doing that out of self-love. And self-love, to me, is the most important love of all. It makes you a good mom. It makes you a great girlfriend. It makes you a great individual in life and we forget because we're always giving 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 but when i turned and fixed myself and cleaned up my diet and gave myself vitamins i went wow this is self-love the best love of all jenny and we we love you and we love your work and you're an inspiration for for a lot of people 
I will highly, highly recommend your book, Mother Warriors. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. For more information on Jenny McCarthy, her latest book, and the movement to find the causes and treatments for autism, please visit her website at www.generationrescue.org. You're listening to Change Nation. I'm Ariane, and I've been talking to Jenny McCarthy. Thanks for listening. Thank you.